Hello everyone, this is Alex USA Days. So today we start new module and this is development methodologies. Now the initial start of this module is about software development lifecycle. This is the how everything started, um, how we developed other methodologies. This is like the foundation, the base of it. So SDLC, uh, commonly known as software development lifecycle, or systems development life cycle is essentially approach on to development software or systems or both software and hardware. There are several stages that it goes through, and those stages are clearly defined. Uh, it starts with the planning stage, uh, where the goal of the project has to be defined. Uh, there's an estimation of costs and the timeline uh, for completion of the project. Then it goes into next stage, and the next stage is analysis, and this was where you analyze needs for the product and develop user requirements. Uh, so there's functional requirements documentation uh, set in place. Next stage is the design stage uh, that is answering the question how it will be built. So detailed system design documentation created, uh, design is created. So essentially, this is all the foundation requirement to start development. Next stage. Now, then there is development stage, and this is where the project setup happens, uh, environment installation happens, database created, and the actual uh, coding is done. So all the development goes into this stage. Next stage would be verification. Uh, during verification, product is verified against the requirements. Bug are fixed. So if testers find issues, they send code back. Uh, then it gets fixed by the developers, then it sends the developer sent it back to the testers and testers verified it was actually fixed and no other regressions were introduced. Uh, this is a stage where tests, analysis and reports are produced and overall the quality of software is estimated uh, and you know, it should act and behave, the program or system should act and behave as laid out in the requirements. After that, there's a deployment stage. Uh, and during the deployment stage, product is being deployed to production environment. And any resolutions uh, that happen during this uh, or production issues, this is happening in this stage. So if there's something that's not going well during the deployment, after deployment, uh, this is part of the deployment stage and fixes are here. After that, there's a last stage, a maintenance stage, uh, which requires includes system updates, patches, uh, customer issue reports and bug fixes. So initially, you know, uh, there's mostly a skeleton crew. There's no more active work on it, but you will get your updates every once in a while um, to make your product better, right? So initially, a software development lifecycle uh, originated back in 1960s, and the idea was to help develop large-scale systems. Because back then, computers uh, were created and managed by large corporations or like IBM. And a computer could be a size of room. So they're pretty big. Uh, and they were mainly designed for large-scale scientific and technological applications. So it wasn't back then like it is now. Not, a, not everyone had their computer at home and you could start working on an app or you had a business idea. No, it was uh, lab settings. Uh, with scientists and big corporation with big money working on uh, scientific projects, right? So computers back then was were completely different uh, what they are now. And uh, this approach was created in order to make sure that all the time and the money invested in the production uh, were not wasted and everything went through stages that were thoroughly documented. Everything was estimated, measured, calculated, uh, you know, there were, there were no money wasted. Initially, at the end, you had a completely uh, finished, full working product. You might have uh, some upgrades going on, some new features may be added later, uh, but it wasn't like it is right now when, you know, we have like continuous development happening and things are getting updated and upgraded uh, pretty often. Now, back then, something was developed for a long period of time, once it was out, it served for a long period of time. Um, an example of a technology like that that I could think of is maybe you know your X-rays at the dental office. Uh, 
you know, it was developed once, it took some time to actually make it work properly. The documentation was in place, all the estimates, the cost, everything was estimated. And once it was completed and tested, it went out in the field and then it stayed there for, I don't know, five, 10 years, right? Until the new version, the new release came. Okay. Um, so development methodologies initially started with the software development life cycle. That was like the basis of it. Now it grew in uh, many other approaches and we have a numerous of different development methodologies uh, that are available today. We will cover more in the next classes. We will talk about, and this is just prototype. There is no slides yet, but we will talk about waterfall model. Uh, we will talk about agile. We will talk about scrum. I uh, will talk about Kanban. I uh, will talk about shift left. So, uh, and then we will talk about lean and what part of, of it can or how it can be used in the current settings in software development. And uh, this is pretty much it for this module. So you have to remember that software development life cycle is initially a model that was developed a while ago um, that kind of was the foundation for the ongoing uh, methodologies for the development methodologies uh, that are in place right now. And it's like the classics and the standards uh, for the development of systems or software now, in the description, I will leave a link uh, to materials, to web page, where there are slides and more proper, you know, laid out description of what it is, more visuals. But in a nutshell, uh, this is what software development life cycle is. Now, uh, if something is completed and then it's uh, went through the maintenance stage and now it's been getting rid of, then there's would be another follow-up stage which is not mentioned here but something to wrap up with the product to i don't know to um to transfer customers maybe from one product to another so there is um potentially another stage that is so uh, is about closing the product but it's not actually often mentioned sometimes you will find it sometimes not but this is the most like classical representation of it now if the product uh why it's called cycle if the product will be developed uh, with new additional features or redeveloped or upgraded, updated, it might actually go through the whole thing all over again. So, you know, we start with the product A, we release it, uh, then there's some changes that will go in place that not simple patch or a simple upgrade, more new features added, maybe it's like will be a newer version, it will start in new. It's like the difference between iPhone 4, 5, and 6, and 7, and so on. So each release of the new product uh, won't be just maintenance and update, but will actually go through all the stages all over again. So it will have planning, analysis, design, development, verification, deployment, maintenance, and so on. Okay, so when you asked uh, on the interview, and if you asked on the interview about this question, you can freely speak about those stages and just add, you know, that this is the classical approach that was created back in 1960s uh, when the times were different and the system were mainly managed and developed by big corporations. It was very scientific. Uh, but this approach was a foundation for the development methodologies that we have in place today, right? Such as, and we will talk about them again in the next classes, Waterfall, Agile, Scrum, Kanban, uh, Shift Left. Um, not so much Lean, but more on that later. Lean is pretty much a term that is coming from manufacturing, uh, but the principles of Lean are also applied in the software development nowadays, and they go in parallel uh, with, with the uh, implemented development methodology. Okay. So hopefully uh, this video was helpful. Again, for more detailed information, I will leave a link uh, below this video so you can follow and read. Um, if you enjoyed this material, please leave like, subscribe. Uh, I will try to release videos more often, so probably a couple times a week. Right now I'm doing it on the weekends, but as 
time allows, uh, I will try to release at least maybe twice, even maybe three times a week, so we can cover the whole material faster. Okay, so this was Alex USA Days. Thanks for watching and.